Good morning and welcome everybody to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily photo show on YouTube. And uh, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, weekday, every weekday, yada, yada. Just come live if you're not watching this live sometime. Hey, here's the thing. I spent, the, we're starting like 23 minutes late because I spent the last almost half hour finishing configuring everything because I realized that I didn't yet have this configured right. And it was majorly complicated, but it's working, I think. So here's today's uh, hope. This is what we're trying to do. Showing how to calibrate using this guy here, the Blackmagic Pocket Ultrascope, which I would show you on a close-up camera, but I can't because the close-up camera is being used for something else. But it's tiny, it's pocket-sized, hence the name, SDI in one end, USB 3 out on the other. Now, one of the, and what this does is this gives you, this gives you this on your screen. Scopes, all kinds of scope, all kinds of cool scope data. You can see the dancing, moving, dancing monkey over there in the corner, and it's fantastic. Now, um, major, major problem though with the scopes is they are not, the software does not work with Mac OS Sierra. <laughs> uh, I had to install. Um, what version did I have to get on here? I had to install on an older Mac OS. I got El Capitan, says so version 11, 10.11, on an external hard drive to boot from that just so that I can use the ultrascope. So this is super annoying, and I've talked to Blackmagic about it, and they basically said, we, we don't know. It's one of those you're kind of going, um, I think you've got someone to drop their run. Um, it's one of these things where uh, I don't know if it's if they're just being coy, like we can't fix it, we don't know how to fix it, we don't have time to fix it, we don't care enough to fix it, no one bought the thing, so we're not going to fix it. I don't know. I couldn't get a straight answer other than, it doesn't work on the latest operating system. So, and I have no idea on Windows what the, it may work on Windows 7 or whatever. I have no idea what the latest Windows is. But um, but on a Mac, if you're going to use it, you have to install an older OS, have a Mac with an older OS. And the real challenge was I have Macs in-house with older operating systems. They're older Macs. But this requires a pretty modern graphics card. So you basically have to have a Mac that was made within the last couple of years running an operating system that was on it when it came out. Super annoying, but there you go. So that was finally my solution. I installed Capitan, El Capitan on a uh, external FireWire drive, and that is, or whatever, Thunderbolt drive, and that is what that Mac is booting off of right now. So just so you know, that's what you need to do. And then you take your SDI signal from whatever the source is. This could be off of a camera. Um, it's off the ATEM switcher right now for me. It could be off of anything that does SDI out. And if your camera only does HDMI out, then you can get an HDMI to SDI converter. Blackmagic will gladly sell you one. And then USB in and the Ultrascope software. And then what you get is this glorious thing. Okay, so we talked about in an earlier video, uh, we did kind of a first look and we'll link to that one up here. Uh, we did a, a overall discussion of what it is, how it works and kind of looked at it. So now we're not gonna get into that again. Now we're gonna look at actually calibrating two cameras because this is where this, what really matters here. Um, it's not just making this camera look good, which obviously we want to do, but it's also matching with um, with other cameras. And so a little bit of backstory here. There's a second camera hooked up right now, which is this one right there. And that is my GH4. And it is currently out of sync with my dialog. I am very well aware of this. That is because that is an HDMI out only camera and no hooking up a YAG with SDI out does not give you in sync because it's an HDMI to SDI conversion. Learn that uh, the $500 hard way. Um, and and uh, anyway, so that's the camera that I used to use, but now I'm using this Blackmagic Studio camera 4K. I think that's what it's called. Something. Anyway, um, one of the little black... Let's just, can I pull this up? Can I actually go to a browser on any of these systems? Let me just pull this up real quick, like. And Blackmagic Design. Let's go, let's just go full screen on this and then switch over to this. And the camera I'm talking about is... Look under products, look under professional cameras. This guy right here, Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K. This is the camera that I'm currently using here. And one of the, there's two awesome advantages of this camera. One, it's SDI out, so you get in sync. It's actually like a half frame delay, so it's acceptable tolerance. And I have complete color control over the camera using this, the ATEM software control. Switch over to the camera view. There's the BMD1 camera. That's the camera that we were just looking at. And I have complete control over the colors on here, which is what makes this thing Partly, partially what makes this thing so freaking cool. Now, the camera is a micro four thirds camera with a micro four thirds mount, which means all my Lumix lenses work on it. So double super bonus there. And the camera that is on there, or the lens that's on there right now is the same lens that's on the GH4, the 12 to 35 F2.8. 
I can actually even autofocus through here, but man, it's like the slowest, worst autofocus ever. But you know, it eventually works. We've talked about this camera before. We'll link to that here, and you can see some more video about that camera. But um, that's what we're going to get into today. Today, we're going to look at calibrating the two. So, um, little tip for you: if you're doing the calibration here before we get into uh, actually doing it, the this interface. If I drag a slider here, there is no undo. I don't know why. Uh, but there's not even an undo menu. So if you make a change, you can't hit undo. And if I grab the slider and move it just a little bit and say these numbers go from minus 0 0.04 to minus 0 0.05, and then I drag it back to minus 0 0.04, you'd think, well, hey, cool, you went back to where you were, right? <laughs> no, because for some slightly mind-numbing reason, this software only gives you uh, access to two decimal places, 0.04. The actual accuracy of it is, I believe, seven decimal places. And the only way to access that is through the XML file that is saved when you save your configuration. So what this means is if you rock the slider to 0.05 back to 0.04, you are not back to where you started again. You are possibly at 0.041253 instead of 0.041987. And you know what? That little difference is enormous. So there is no undo. And you can't just rock the slider back and forth and get back to where you were. So at any time you find a setting that you like, that you might want to come back to, you have to save it. And here's tip number one here. The way you want to do this, uh, wrong one, here we go, is you go up to this little uh, menu, click on this, and you can do a copy. So I copy this, and then I'm going to find an unused camera. So let's go to camera eight, which I'm not currently using. And... They go to this and choose paste. And I just got to remember that camera eight is where I stuck it. And if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could change the name of that. So let's see here, camera eight. Uh, camera eight's not being used. We're going to call this save. Save. There we go. Save that. And so now you see there's my save right there, the little named guy. That is my bookmark, if you will. And I could, you know, use, I could do this for as many of them as I wanted to. You'll actually see that I have a color S and a color V here that I was playing with earlier, which I've dropped settings into. All right. So I have just dropped my settings into save. Let's go back to BMD one and uh, bring up the main camera again. And this camera, the way you're looking at it right now is calibrated to the GH4. I'm about to break that. I'm about to reset it and then show you the calibration process. Before we do that, let me scroll through the comments here and see what else is going on. All righty. Um, okay, haven't installed Sierra. Way too much software that's working perfectly. I get it. Believe me, I totally get it. Um, thing I have to upgrade my operating system because of all the demo stuff that I do. I often need to be on the latest OS. It's a pain in the ass. But anyway, there you go. Um, all right. Uh, people asking what lens I used. I already answered that. Um, Black Magic are the masters of giving you almost exactly what you want, almost exactly when you need it. That is, that is perfect, Trevor Benaki. That is absolutely a perfect description of Black Magic. Almost exactly what you want, almost exactly when you need it. Um, you like their stuff, won't buy it, but you like it. Well, thing is, it's cheap. Now, well, cheap, affordable. When you compare it to something like Aja Gear, which does essentially all the same things, it's almost like add another zero. And it's more widely compatible and maybe better made. I don't know. But Blackmagic, their stuff's affordable. And I know that that sounds insane when you're talking about a twelve dollars or $1,300 camera and a $4,000 switcher and all this other stuff. But if you compare that to what else is out there, it really is affordable, uh, which is nuts. Again, I know, but there you go. Um, OK. That's uh, OK, good. That's all the comments we have so far. So now we can get into it. So let's let's take a look at the color calibration part. So I'm going to now, you're not going to see me do the reset, but I'm going to, well, here, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to here, go up to here, come here. There we go. And I'm going to hit reset all. And as soon as I do that, you're going to see these colors shift. So here we go. Reset all. Boom. Not a massive change, but it was a change. And it is now significantly different than, uh, where are we, than this camera. Right, so there's the GH4 and there's the Blackmagic camera. Significantly different. How different is it? Well, let's take a look at the split screen that I set up. If I can find that preset. Um, page three of presets. There we go. Scopes compare. So here's, 
All right, I need to, okay, now I do need to move the camera a little bit. So what am I gonna do? All right, hold on a second while I move the J4. And let's try and get this thing a little bit more into view. Let's see if I manage to get that right. Oh, okay. let's just do that. That'll work. Okay, so there you can see a pretty dramatic color difference. So if I am between the GH4 and the Blackmagic camera there. So if I'm going to do any um, any switching back and forth, you can see that color shift and that's not cool. We don't like that. Plus, just looking at the main camera, the, the blacks are just not, they're not black. Okay, now I know that the GH4 is in the shot. That's fine. Um, actually, it's probably a little bit too much in the shot. Uh, it, it's not... You know, you want your blacks to be black. You want your whites to be white or at least close to it. Um, anyway, so that's that's what we that's what we're dealing with. Okay, so now to calibrate. So you've got tools like gray cards, neutral gray. This is great for white balance and for uh, exposure checking. Oh yeah, another super annoyance on the Black Magic camera your white balance controls are presets only. You can't do a custom white balance. And you can't even dial in the number in Kelvin. It's basically you have like 5556, that's it. It's, that's super annoying. So you kind of have to do your white balance with a gamma, RGB gamma adjustment, which is, I frankly, shame on you, black magic. That should be fixed. Okay, so you got a tool like this. And then you've got tools like these guys, Color Checker Passport, which also has a nice big neutral on the back. Um, and you can do your color color checking with this, or I have another version of one of these things, uh, a little bit bigger, like this. And you can bring these up. And these are all the tools that you use for color calibrating. The problem is, the problem that I ran into was that to do, uh, I want to start with just black and white balance. That's like most important. Get my blacks the same, get whites the same, get the gamma the same. If I pull up a little card like this or whatever, just a little black and white gray card um, or where'd that pocket one go? Um, here it is. Or like this, which has this wonderful black, white, gray. If I pull this thing up, I can't punch into this to get accurate on the scopes. I need a really big version of this or I need to move the camera closer. The problem is I can't move the camera closer because it's a pain in the ass, frankly. And um, yeah, so that ain't happening. So I asked Ryan to build me something, and he did. He built me this. Look at this thing. Chunk on. Aha! How cool is that? So now I've got this huge black, white, gray card that I can use to do my calibration. Thing is, this is just construction paper. So the black is a little bit too reflective. It's actually black foam core. It's a little bit too reflective. It's not pure black. The white, we're going to assume the white's pure white. The gray though is, there's like a color tint to it. So I, I can't color balance off of the gray. This is the most neutral he could find, but um, at least I can match it between the cameras. It may not be totally neutral, but at least I can match between the cameras. But the black and white are the most important. And, and what I found was as soon as I hit the black and whites, even everything else looks so, it's like, it, oh, that was good. That was like good enough basically. So here's what we got to do. So I'm gonna go back to my split screen view here. Um, scopes compare, there we go. And try and position this in a way so I can see them. Okay, so now I clearly need to move my, um, move the camera. Uh, Ryan, give me a hand here. Definitely easier with an assistant. Okay, so that camera, you're gonna tilt down, I think, just uh, yeah. on, on the tripod knob, uh, not that one. The other one. Uh, there you go. Yep, perfect. There. Oh, too hard, back up a little bit. Sweet, now zoom uh, out a tiny bit, uh, other direction. There you go, a little bit more, Dupe stop. Go back the other way a little bit. Okay, now raise up a little bit again, tilt back up. Sweet, gun. Oop, go back, tilt up. Up, up. the wrong way. The other, the other up or down? Up. Okay, well then tilt down. <laughs> <laughs> Read my mind, damn it. There you go, stop. Okay, perfect, thank you. Hey, this is live. <laughs> People walking in like, what the hell? Um, okay, so now I've got this split. So now, with that split, I can bring up the scopes and do a comparison. So now, bring up my other preset that I just built. Um, there we go. Pop into my scopes. Oops. Wake up that computer. There we go. So now, I've got my scopes. Sweet. Whew. So now is the, the fun, tricky part of... Let me kind of zoom into this. 
of, can I do this? Um, let's see, let me zoom back out. That's kind of hard to see. Where's, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. The That's right. I don't have the, let me go to this view so I can show you what's going on here. Okay, so I have the scopes. The bottom right image is what the scopes are going to be looking at to calibrate. And um, that's not set to the split screen because I need to send the split screen to the scope. So I can go over to my ATEM control and go to my scopes and feed it the super source, which hopefully, damn it, that's the wrong one. Um, oh, wow. Okay, I just realized a flaw in this whole setup. I can't pull two different super sources simultaneously. So, shit. Uh, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. Uh, <laughs> let me pull up the other super source preset. Give me just a moment here, let me find that. Where is my scopes compare? All right, so there's, the, there's what I need. So that view is what I need. And now if we look at the uh, look at the scopes now. Now you should be able to see this. Make sure. Are you? No, you're not looking at the right thing. You need to now look at this view. God, this is ridiculous. Whose idea was this? Seriously, fire my producer. <laughs> Come on. Paging through the presets, definitely a bad idea. Uh, we want to look at this. Okay, sweet. That works. Okay, so now you can see in the lower right the split screen view with the two colors side by side, which are clearly not the same. And in the top left, you can see the R you see the RGB parade and you can see a very clear difference between the black. Let me see if I can. Can I point to this? Yeah, I can point to that. See, there's the black on the GH4 and the black off the ATEM. Or is it reversed? I don't remember which, which one's which. And then there's your whites and there's the grays. So, yeah, that's the on the right is the um, is the not the ATEM, sorry, the black magic camera. So what I need to do now is and this is what I was I wanted to be able to do the split side by side, but I can't, I realized, because, anyway, I, just, I can't do it the way I wanted to. But so you're not going to be able to see me make the control adjustments. So let me just switch over to this real quick. And the adjustments that I will do, let me just kind of sit down my stupid card here. And I'm going to do a really big dramatic shift. So Blackmagic 1, I'm just going to take these shadows and take them way down. Okay, so that's a way, way down on the shadows. And if I switch back to this camera, you can see what that looks like. And if I lift the shadows up and down, up and down, I can do that. I can, let me just reset that since I can't undo. Uh, gamma, I've got gamma control up and down. Okay, and then I've got gain, which is my whites essentially up and down. So I've got all these controls. Now, adjusting those is what is going to lift the black, mid and white points on the scope. And essentially what I want to do to start is just take those three and adjust them, twiddle them until they line up with that camera. And the reason I'm calibrating to this Lumix camera is because it looks amazing, right? It, the view off of this camera is fabulous. The colors look great. The white and black balance looks great. Um, it, it just, it looks fantastic. And so I want to make that camera match it. What the hell is that? It's like a, something weird outside. Sorry guys. Um, so that's that's why I'm trying to match to this camera. Okay. And we're going to go back to, still got the split here. Okay, so this still works. I'm going to go back to here. You're just not going to be able to see me do the adjustment on the software control, which is what I wanted you to see, but you can't. So um, let me reset all of this again. Bring this guy back up. And try and sneak over here. So now I'm trying to make the adjustments on one computer and look at this on another. This is a brilliant idea. Uh, I'm going to take my lift and bring that. Now, you'll see there's a hu this huge curve is not cool. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Because the camera is not set very well. Um, try and get an angle there where that doesn't have quite the light fall off. There we go. Oh, there. That, that, that. Oh, that's better. Okay, good. That'll work better. So now I've got that. Take my lift and line that up. There we go. Take my gain and line that up. And then take the gamma and line that up. And now when I do that, looks like I'm going to have to take the lift back down. Take the gamma back up a little bit more. Something tells me this is hopefully going to look right. Oops, too far. 
take my gain up a hair. Believe me, this is easier to do more accurately when you're not trying to broadcast live simultaneously. So this will not look perfect, but then I will load up my preset that I saved the other day that looked pretty darn good. So I'm basically going back and forth between these three trying to get it. Okay, we're going to call that good enough. Now, if you look at the, move the mouse over here. If you look at the, um, the split between the RGB, there are some subtle differences, right? Like the green is pretty well in line there, but the blue is a little low, the red's a little low. Um, I can adjust those individually because, let's go back to this view. Down here, I have individual red, green, and blue lift gamma and gain adjustments. So I was previously, I was grabbing the big slider, which moved everything, but now I can go in here individually, RGB or Luma, and move those separately as well. So let's go back to this view, um, back, to, back to that view, and pull this up again. Kind of get that at that angle that worked out so well. There we go. And now I will go to, let's see here, what do I want to adjust first? Um, Let's do, I'm going to bring the reds down a little bit. So the red lift, I'm going to bring it down just a hair. There we go. Green definitely needs to come down. Again, we're looking at the lifts of the blacks. And you notice, like, if I make a change on one, it kind of alternates on the other. So there's definitely a bit of back and forth happening. So I'm going to bring the green down a little bit, but now I need to bring the red down again. There we go. And now the blue is way down. Jeez. Okay, we way down. There we go. Oh, that worked out pretty well. I'm gonna bring the blue up a tiny bit so they're all equally uneven, and then take the Luma one and bring that down a little bit. Nice, that evened out nicely. Okay, um, great. And the whites actually fell in pretty well. It's a little bit off on the top. I'm gonna take the red on the gain up a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough. Now look, I know this is not perfect. I know this is not perfect, but deal with it. Um, let's now switch to, go back to my main camera. Okay. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look right, does it? <laughs> it's okay, we're gonna load up my preset in a minute here. Um, if I do the split, uh, bring up the split. We're closer. Oh, the saturation is still off. So this, that's right. I need to bring up the saturation a little bit. Tiny bit. So now we're closer. The blues are definitely off. Well, anyway, this is the idea. Look. I know. Fire me. Um, why anybody watches this crap is beyond me, seriously. <laughs> Let me go back to this screen. So you can see that there was that side by side I wanted to be able to show you, but the scopes of what you're looking at is now something else. Anyway, um, let me... Oh, that's right. I wanted to load up the presets. So let me go back to my iOS view. Or sorry, to my um, this view here. Oh my God, what is all this Facebook crap? Notifications. God, seriously? Oh, someone's calling. <laughs> that's why. Google thing. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to bring up my saved preset. So I go to the one that I called save. Seriously, this is worth the price of admission alone right here, this little tip. So let's copy that. Go back to BMD1. Paste that in paste that in and now we go back to my main camera and that's the look that we want and if we go back to the split view scopes compare so it looks like my blues are still off a bit um it's a bit darker which one's which um I forget which camera's which right so the bmd camera is a little bit dark so i'm gonna have to play with the gamma a little bit there uh, pull it down pull it up lift it up a little bit because it's a little bit dark like here's a little bit darker but that's the basic idea um Okay, let's get back to the main view. All right. Insane. I know. Just that's what I wanted to show you. This is crazy talk. Um, I'm going to now try and go through the comments and see how many people told me I'm a complete fool. Let me get this camera out of the way so I can actually see my comment screen. I hope this was at least more. Oh, crap. Hope this was at least marginally entertaining. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's go through the comments here and then we're going to get out of here and go to my next show, which I am actually prepared for, but I have to reconfigure all this. Um, okay, let's see here. Comments, comments, where were we? Um, okay, so we're talking about uh, 
waiting for the new cameras. Okay, um, they're way above my pay grade. Guy Teague says, wow, this is way above my pay grade. I bought a BM PCC, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Aha, and found a pro last month in, in order to learn video. Uh, frantically researching everything I can to find a preparation for the GH5 in about three weeks. Nice, well, there you go. Cool, thanks for coming along. Blackmagic is cheaper than Ari and Red. Absolutely, that's the thing. It's It really is cheaper. now. I would still much rather be shooting with the GH5 for any kind of production work, uh, just quality, the autofocus, all this stuff. But if you're setting up uh, live switching, these Blackmagic cameras are really cool. I would love to have several more of these, right? I'd like to have a top-down camera on those occasions as I do things there. I want to have a close-up camera in here. Um, out in the studio, I'd like to have two or three of them set up out there so that you can have one on a roving tripod, one that's a wide view, light the whole studio. You know, all it takes is money. Grows on trees, doesn't it? Uh, okay, let's see here. Black Magic is cheaper than Aryan Red. Yeah, got to go to Destiny to live stream. Love you, Joseph. But Destiny is good. Destiny, Destiny, video games. Come on, you guys. My high school had two red scarlets. Damn, dude, where'd you go to high school? The mic is shishing again. Well, that's probably more me, Achita. I didn't make any adjustments. Um, sorry. Um, no custom white balance. I know, insane. I prefer the new Cinema Pocket camera than the new Ursa Pro. Awesome, I haven't played with those at all. You could use a super source to zoom in. I, uh... Right. Quentin, you're right. I could use a super source to zoom in. Correct. Um, as I did when I set up the two, the split side by side here. So you're right, I could use that to zoom in. Um, but that requires the ATEM, which the Ultrascope, frankly, I think you should be able to zoom into a part of the picture using this view here. Let me switch this back to um, the normal camera view on there. Let's see here. Scopes, send it to BMD Micro. There we go. Okay, so what I want to do is on here be able to push in. So if I hold this up in this window here, right, this window here, I want to be able to crop into it and say, just show me this part of it. That's what I really want. And by the way, oh, now that this is up, let me just show this to you too. You can see that these are the color bits. These are the color points showing up up here. So pretty remarkable that it just lines up like that. Um, there's yellow, yellow is spot on, red is not spot on. So my colors are not technically accurate. Uh, how to adjust those is definitely beyond my pay grade. I, I have not figured that one out at all. So someone out there can educate me on that, but that's how those work. Um, anyway, so back to this. What other comments are coming in here? Um, watching this, I suddenly, Guy Teague says, that I suddenly have a lot more respect for pro video production. Maybe I should have watched those making of extras on the DVDs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, and Burns is acknowledging that I am a complete fool. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and he's LOL and JK, so I know that it's okay. Burns is cool. We're good. Trevor Pinnock, says, the problem is that sensors see colors differently and each camera is processing those colors differently internally. It's not you. No, that is, that is absolutely correct. Now, here's... The sensors might actually be the same between these cameras. We don't know. No one talks about where they get their sensors from. Everybody gets their sensors from Sony, but nobody wants to admit it. This, but then the sensor, once they get it, God only knows what they're doing with it after that. So the processing that's happening on this camera is radically different than what's happening on this camera. So it's understandable and, ex and, and normal that they would be different. It's just then trying to make them match, which is yet another reason to have multiples of the same camera on set because they don't deal with that crap. Um, there might be little subtle differences between models, but you can easily, between copies, but you could easily tweak those things in software. Um, doing this is a little bit, a little bit more challenging. Uh, but as you can see, I've got close, really close. And I'm not normally doing split screen, right? Normally it would be a just switch from one camera to the other. So if I'm, and this would be my close up hands camera, which if it's out of sync a little bit is okay. I don't usually put this one on my face unless we're out there. So it's, it's the ability to do that uh, is pretty cool. But if I had multiples of those, it'd be even better. Okay, good Lord. Um, I, I gotta go do another show. Hey, uh, do you guys ever watch the photoapps.expert stuff? So I have this little website, little, called photoapps.expert. Let me pull this up here on this screen. And this is me. This is my site as well. Um, the photo moments get dropped into here as well as a ton of other stuff. In seven minutes and 48 seconds, as you can see on the countdown here, I'm supposed to be starting a live training on On One Photo Raw. And this is going to be a uh, deep dive into the browsing module. This will be live just like this is live. It's the same idea. Uh, when it's live, it's free. When it's no longer live, it is no longer free, unlike these, which just live on YouTube. So if you want to watch this, 
just go to photoapps.expert slash live. And in seven minutes and 22 seconds, I will be there doing a whole different show. <sighs> Welcome to my universe. Uh, I, I, I got to jump out of here and go get ready for that. Thanks, guys. This was fun. Um, I know that was also insane. I actually sort of succeeded on this, but not really. Um, this is probably going to be one of my most polarizing videos on YouTube. All right, guys, I got to go. Take care of yourselves. Thumbs up. Thumbs Don't thumbs down this one. I know it was ridiculous. Please just save me the embarrassment. Don't give me a... Love it. And, uh, you know, subscribe, comment. Also, so I know... Um, God, I got to go. Um, all you guys are thumbs upping this video, which is awesome. This video is the live one will get replaced by the recorded one later and all the thumbs up go away, which is super annoying. Um, if you're watching this recorded, then obviously you're going to thumbs up and that's it. But if you're watching this live, then your thumbs up doesn't show up later. So if you think about it, go back through and just go over to the and thumbs up some of the older videos that you know you liked, but you're not seeing your thumbs up on anymore. Okay, I got to go. Uh, see you guys later. See you guys in six minutes and 20 seconds for those who are going to come along for the ride. Bye-bye.